So you've worked as an actor across stage and screen for over 40 years. Uh, not only have you worked for the biggest theatre companies, so at The Globe, RSC, The National, but you've worked extensively across film and TV, so Casualty, Doctor Who, um, Wing and a Prayer, Decoy Bride, the list is massive. Um, and this year you became president of Equity and the second female president in Equity yep. history, which is huge. Thank you for joining me. My great pleasure. pleasure. I'm also the second Scott. Oh, wow. Which, you know, is close <laughs> to my heart. Sorry, yeah. banging in the microphone. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I believe you have um, a yes, something to read Yes, I wanted to share so. this uh, with you um, because um, one of the things that we've, I was very involved with when I was still a vice president of equity was this big campaign that came out of the Harvey Weinstein scandals. I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about the whole harassment thing that's been mm. going on. Yeah. And we, um, we, we had a sexual harassment working group um, and we came up with a three-pronged attack. The Agenda for Change, which is a whole load of information about the number of people we spoke to in the industry profession professionals, the industry bodies, the engagers we spoke to, the people we're talking to about changing the, the way that they employ our members, etc., and the way that they treat them, uh, the stops and checks and the safety measures put in place, all that. We also have um, a poster campaign, which is the Creating Safe Spaces campaign, which has the harassment helpline and the harassment um, email address on it. And the third part of it, which has proved to be very um, effective in, in bringing about real change is this affirmation we wrote and which we've rolled out and we are rolling out continually across the business um, wherever our members work and we are asking someone at the beginning of the, each new venture to stand up or not, um, stay sat if that's your preference um, and read this out um, and it's because it's the spoken word it's proving very effective. So I'd like to read it before Please we start do. this sort of. Yep. So this is the, this is the affirmation. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us working on this project is entitled to work in a safe space, a space free of fear, a space free of bullying and harassment of any kind. We will work together honoring our differences and celebrating the gifts we each bring to the table. We will treat one another with politeness and respect at all times. And if we are subjected to or witness bullying and harassment, we will speak out, knowing that our voices will be heard and we will be taken seriously. Together, we can create a safe space. Thank you. Really good. That's brilliant. It's good, so isn't it? It's really it's good. Really powerful. It works. Have you, um, have you, so you started kind of putting it out there for people to use already, or is this quite new? Yeah. And, oh no, it's not new. It's um, it, we basically we launched the campaign a year ago, but the, it, that three pronged attack that I was talking about is is making a difference. From what we can tell, we're we're constantly going out there and checking with people, asking members if they've noticed a difference. It's still going on, and now that the you know the the major newspaper selling, uh, television programs selling, you know, brouhaha um, of, I mean, amazingly brave people in our industry coming out and putting their names and faces on the line and saying, this happened to me. And that's not to be detracted from at all. That is extraordinary what they did. But of course, it's also true that that kind of fame um, attracts uh, attention from the media. Um, we in equity, along with, you know, the other unions, the other entertainment unions, and indeed unions all over the world. The, the whole of the TUC is behind this, which gives us millions of members rather than just our own very grand 45,000, but you know, still, um, is that when the media spotlight moves on, we will still be there with our big wooden hammers. So when they crawl out from under the stones, equity will hit you over the head and you have to crawl back again until you learn your lesson and you know you can't do it anymore. Because these guys haven't gone away, these guys, these women as well, I know there are women who've been behaving badly, um, they haven't gone away, they're just lurking furtively in the background. Yeah, and I feel like there was, you know, such a big um, thing in the press and it went on for a few weeks and everyone was writing about it, Time's Up, Me Too, when it launched in the UK. And then it seems to have gone quiet over the last few months, of doesn't course. it? And it and I actually did find myself looking online and trying to find information and what was going on and, and I couldn't find anything. No. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it is going on is all I can say. Certainly, yeah. I, I can speak only really for equity, but I can certainly assure you that um, 
I suppose the fourth prong of the attack was, um, the, I'm sure Adam Morale Younger would be delighted to be described as the fourth prong in an attack, but he is our, um, he's our brand new um, member of staff uh, who was appointed because of this whole thing. He's our membership support assistant, and he's on the other end of a helpline, and he's also at the other end of a, of a, of a, of a um, uh, harassment helpline email. Mm. Um, it's a completely confidential service between you and Adam, um, and if you phone him, you don't even need to say who you are. Yeah. Um, he will, in complete confidence, uh, talk to you about what you feel. Uh, or you can, or if you prefer not to talk to a man, you can say, Look, I really don't want to talk to a man. I would rather talk to a female member of staff or a gay member of staff or whatever um, sort of idea so that you feel that you are in a comfortable place. Um, and that goes from everything from just wanting to talk about it, talk it through, talk it through, you're not alone, right through to people actually taking uh, companies or individuals to court, um, which some very brave individuals have done because if you're going to do that, then you need a name. Um, and recently we, we won a case for a young woman who had had an absolutely ghastly time. She was on a, a, a small scale tour and um, I mean, I'll tell you one story that happened to her. This is out in the public domain. She fell asleep. They're all knackered, of course, from incredibly tiring work. And um, they drew a, an ejaculating penis on her cheek, took photographs of it, and posted it on social media. I mean, you just go, so, so we won her £10,000 compensation. And, you know, those guys hopefully have learned a lesson and we, they won't behave like that again because they don't want to have to, you know, they may not have any more respect than they had, but it's, you know, they've certainly learned a lesson in terms of we don't spend our money on that if we can avoid it. No, so. Absolutely. And have you, how has the kind of helpline been going? Have you found it's been, uh, there's a lot of people coming forward now? I think um, we'd like more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, gosh, I mean, I'm, my great hope is that the reason why there aren't, you know, that the, the Adam is literally like there aren't enough hours in the day is, is because it's got better and also we've got... We are encouraging people. I mean, somebody like me, you know, I've been in the business a very long time. I graduated in 1974. I don't think you said that yet. But, um, you know, that's a long, 44 years in the business. Um, I've worked in every kind of media. I, you know, I, I'm getting my, I'm 65. I get my, get my pension now. So I, I'm in a very, well, comparatively safe pe place in that that's you know, I'm not a profligate but I, I'm not very extravagant um, so I that's kind of quite a lot of, that's fine for me as long as I can put wine in a glass <laughs> and have a pie <laughs> a veg, vegetarian pie now and again I'm quite happy um, so I am um, uh, so people like me who have been around for a while we are encouraging to go excuse me what did you say to that young person there? You really mustn't speak like that. You need to apologise now or we can't carry on. You can't, you know, and challenge people um, in the workplace. So we've got that going on. We've got our wonderful network of um, uh, equity um, deputies who are members of equity who are in whatever company you're in and they're somebody you can also go to and say, look, I'm feeling a wee bit awkward about this. Now, there's no onus on the deputy to go putting themselves on the line by any manner of means, but they're a great bridge between what's happening in the workplace and ec the equity staff who can deal with it. So that's a really nice thing. We've got our fabulous stage managers who are, you know, you've got somebody in the room all the time on the book, for instance, in a theatre situation. Um, you've got a company stage manager often, and particularly in larger theatres, looking after the company. They are people you can go to. We're encouraging um, engagers like uh, theatre uh, owners and, and, you know, in their HR department to have somebody who's the, hello, I'm the go-to person. And I've just literally just finished playing... Um, in Death of a Salesman uh, in uh, Manchester Royal Exchange. And that was absolutely fantastic, because obviously whenever I'm uh, going to be working in any of the media, I always get in touch with the artistic director or the boss or the whatever, and I say, please, can I read out, or can somebody, it doesn't have to be me, read out the affirmation, do we have the posters up in the room and everything like that. And of course, back from uh, Manchester Royal Exchange came, Absolutely. We're doing it all. We always do that. And I'm like, thank you very much. And then you go into that building and the first day before we started the read through, you know, there was um, the company stage manager said, now, hey, here am I. My name is. Uh, please come to me with anything at all. Uh, Maureen's here. She's, she's the president of equity. So, so, so. so there, was, there was a whole 
group of individuals from different disciplines that you could go and talk to. So there's a feeling that you could. That yeah. thing of you have permission you know, to, to speak out loud. Um, so, I mean, I, I could, I, I'm very passionate about this. So oh, yeah. I would take up the entire hour or whatever we've got talking <laughs> about this. But I, it's just to say that the, the way we are going to change this really what was a really dire situation and 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 it was ex the, the extent of it was exposed by the you know the, the harvey weinstein thing just lanced a boil didn't yes. it yeah. um the way we're going to change that forever is is just keeping on keeping on and people calling us and telling us that things are happening and we can go in there and we can try and write it and we can do our best whatever you know whatever ammunition you give us so i would just say please 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 to everybody you know, let us know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, there's a tendency for actors who, to have this goal when they're new coming into the industry to think, I have to become an equity member. And then once they have it, they, they you know, oh, it's official, you're an actor, you've got your stamp. And then, uh, you know, once they become a member, I wonder how much people actually know the work that you do. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you, you have your card, you have your membership number, and, and people don't fully appreciate the, the extent of the work that you do. So, sure. I w you know, you've got over 44,000, 45,000 45,000 now, yes, amazing, which members. is more than it ever was. Even when we had the closed shop when getting the equity cards like Willy Wonka's golden ticket, you know, yeah. it's <laughs> extraordinary. Um, Matt Hood, who is the head of our communications department, he's the assistant general secretary and head of communications, um, is doing an amazing job. And it's just like, of course, that's Oh, fabulous. So we're very, very pleased because obviously yeah. the more of us, the more powerful we are. Mm. So, so I kind of, could you kind of summarise a little bit about the work that you're doing and how you're supporting performers? I mean, we just spoke about the Me Too movement there, but it, it really is, it, it's not just insurance cover. It's not just, you know, there's so much more to it, isn't there? Yes, I mean, we would like m more members to to contact us and tell us what's happening because one of the great things about having um, you know, somebody like me, as I say, because I'm a working actor and I know what it's like and um, you know, very recently I had my first experience ever of ageist a knockback because of my age, which I was really, which is a thorny area um, because it's a protected characteristic and I was so angry, <laughs> I couldn't do anything about it um, and I should have done on behalf of the membership, but um, so but what, the reason why I bring that up is because I, it's very important that I'm in there, in amongst it, and know what it's like in our industry. The two vice presidents, one is Ian Barrett, and he is a, an actor also, and the other vice president is Julia Carson Sims, who is a stage manager. And she's the first time we've had a stage manager VP, which is really important. Um, we've all felt that. Um, and she's amazing because, of course, she's got that particular side of our business, which is the same but different um, sort of thing. Um, but, but also, every single member of Equity is our eyes and ears in that world. Um, and I actually was speaking to Tim Gale, who is in, in charge of um, adverts, and there's a lot of stuff going on in adverts. Um, and we still have a long way to go to say to people, you know, you can't ask people about their gender reassignation, and you can't ask them about their, all those those things, which are actually embedded in law now. Got a way to go, but. If a member calls us, there was a wonderful thing happened the other day. Um, a member on her way into a, a, an advert, a, a, you know, an advert casting, got an email from the, you know, the, the engager, the casting people. I don't know what, which it was to say, um, da 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 da. Um, could you about are you pregnant? And she got in touch immediately with Tim, just emailed him from her phone and said, I've got this thing from this company. Blah 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 blah. She's on her way on the train. Tim gets on to the advertising agency. By the time she arrived, that had been removed from the questionnaire with all the other things that, were, that, that shouldn't have been there for not only her, but for everybody else. Now, she's an activist, so she never thought twice about, about contacting yeah. Equity. But I would encourage no one to be afraid of getting in touch because you may not know who to to speak to, but we've got this fantastic stage door team, Pana and Kyle, and you just need to call up the main number 
and they will go, okay, hold on a second, yeah, I'll put you through to the appropriate person. If, you're, if they're not there, you can leave them a message, you can send them an email, it's all on the, the website and everything like this. And that's what's, that, that's something that we're trying to encourage members to do more and more and more, that that's there for them. Obviously, um, in terms of the other things that we're doing, you know, it's, it's very, very irritating that BEX, which is the British Equity Collection Society, which you can join if you have ever done any audio or visual work, um, you know, filmed or, or digital uh, visual work. Um, it's money you would never see if you um, if it wasn't for BEX. If it wasn't for equity, there would be no BEX. But because of the new union rules, well, newish union, union rules, uh, we've got to roll that out to anybody. We are not allowed to keep that for equity members, but it's equity members who paid for it. The, the, the equity um, uh, pension scheme, um, also equity members paid for that and put it forward. And that's an, that's an amazing thing which, which equity did for, for people in our profession, our, our, our industry, which is before it was impossible to find a, a, an insurance company, an assurance company, for a pensions company, to take our members on because our work is so fragmented. You never, one day you're doing a one, if you're lucky to be working at all, one day on a radio, and then four weeks go by when you're working in your bar or you're doing your cinema work, or, you know, as an usher or whatever it might be, and then you do, well, you know, I'm, t I'm talk teaching to the converted here, you know, you all know what I'm talking about, eight weeks, or whatever it might be, and it was impossible to get, and then f equity said, we've got to do something about this, and then in we went. And um, with the new r ruling, the law, which is that you have to have a workplace place pension, you are not allowed not to have one, always the equity workplace pension is better than any other pension they will offer you. So the first time I ever did it, it was way, 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 way back. I was working with the Royal Shakespeare Company, doing a massive, great two years and three months. It was amazing. Um, big histories of trilogy when Michael Boyd um, was the artistic director. It was an extraordinary job. And I put in 12 pounds of my, um, my wages every week, and they put in 24 pounds. Wow. So for two years and three months, so that's 52 weeks plus 52 weeks, etc. I was getting £24 a week that I would never have seen. And I would encourage everybody, never, never, never take the pension that they offer you in the workplace. Go for the equity one, because I guarantee you that it's always the better one. So those things as well. Obviously, terms and conditions. You know, I, I was very interested to see on Twitter the other day, um, I'm afraid I can't remember who it was, but there was a, a, a big guy, you wanted him on your side with this black t-shirt on, and it just said, don't like unions? Excellent. We'll, get, we'll go back to child labour, no holidays, no weekends, no right to pension, no, and that's true. I believe that to be true, that if we don't have unions, of which equity is just one I know, if we don't have unions, then they will, they're, they're trying to do it all the time. We go in there with a, with a claim, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away mm -hmm. um, at our rights, our terms and conditions. And that, I would argue, is probably the thing that is most important when we've, when we've gone out to the members and said, what matters to you most? What do you most want equity to do for you? If, if the world was to come to a grinding halt, which would be the one thing you'd want us to hold on to? Terms and conditions is the thing. You know, it's kind of the rest of the stuff we can, ma we can cope without, but this is the, and that's, I mean, there's a big new claim going in for live theatre, um, we've now, we've just put the draft claim together, finalised it, council has given it the big tick, and off it goes, and now starts the rolling our sleeves up and going, you will give us this amount of money. So, you know, yeah. wish us luck. Um, mm. But that's, that's vital as well. Yeah. Mm. Good. What, just go, going a little bit towards your role as uh, president of equity. What does it mean to be the president? What are your specific responsibilities? I became president uh, a very fast track. I, uh, I was always shooting my mouth off of equity and the importance of equity. And um, people kept saying to me, are you going to formalize this passion of yours? I said, no, 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 I'm far too busy, far too busy, far too busy. And then eventually, I was sort of in <laughs> like a pincer movement. And um, so I stood for council and I got onto council, which is our ruling body, of course. and. Um, 
that's a two years term. And then at the end of that, towards the end of that council comes the next lot of um, Stanford vice president, Stanford vice president. I said, I don't know anything. I know, I know nothing. No, yes, you do. You know marvelous, marvelous. I went, OK, I'll stand for vice president. And then I was like that. Oh, good, I'm now vice president. And then somebody said, you need to stand for president now. I said, but it's only been in it four years. So it's been very, very fast track. And um, so I'm still spinning a bit. Um, I'm learning. Um, I'm learning how f really amazing our staff are and how extraordinarily passionate they are about our members and, and helping them. And uh, believe me, come the revolution, I want them on my team. Um, uh, so, w but what I see my, my role as is somebody who can be a bridge between the day-to-day -day workings of equity in Guildhouse, our headquarters in London, and indeed in our uh, headquarters in, in Glasgow, the Scottish office, uh, the Midlands office in Manchester, uh, the Welsh office uh, in Cardiff, and the, the Northern Ireland office in Belfast. Uh, sorry, forgive me, there isn't one there. That's been amalgamated with Glasgow, but it's very much uh, part of that kind of area still looked after, because we're very, you know, it's a, it's a UK-wide union, it's not it's difficult. I know a lot of people find, and we are, sorry, we, I'm talking about, my, you asked me, the question you asked me was me. I, I am very keen that we work very hard, harder than we have been, although great work has been done, to make sure the members know that we have got their backs wherever they live in the United Kingdom. If you live in the island of Lewis, we care about you just as much as we care about you if you live in Battersea. Um, if you live, you know, on the Gower Peninsula, uh, halfway up a hill with a peat fire, and we, we love you, and if you've got internet, we'll get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's, it's really... Um, that, that to me is really important. So my big thing is communication. Um, we've really got to get out there and communicate with the members and, and, um, and let them know what we're up to and, and, and let them feel comfortable with getting in touch with us. And I also feel very, it's very, my part of my job is to be a sort of representative of equity so that when I go out there and I speak on behalf of equity and I feel I'm speaking on behalf of the members, I, it's not, if you were interviewing me as Maureen Beatty, um, it's a different matter. Of course, Maureen is president of equity, but it's a, it is a different matter because if I make a mistake or I say something foolish or I say something that people disagree with, it's a different thing from people disagreeing with me as president of equity. And I'm really happy for people to disagree with me as president of equity. Of course I am, but it's a different matter and my, I'm very conscious of my role in that. I'm also wanting to get the word out there to to the world at large, because I'm a huge believer in the power of advertising. I think it's it has an extra or, advertising has an extraordinary power, doesn't it? If you see something often enough, the chances are you will buy it rather than the thing you don't see so often. Even if you think that other thing might be a wee bit better, you, it, it's a it's a proven fact. So I want us to get out there because there's been regularly there is um, there are conversations on magazine programs and um, you know news programs on radio on television um, and, and newspaper articles where we you know in the last since I became president I could I could give you several examples of because of people simply not knowing people say things about equity which are simply not true there were a number of comments for instance when the whole Harvey Weinstein thing occurred that um, companies um, like the BFI, uh, I believe, um, actually came up with this helpline for people in our industry. Um, I think it was also for technicians and, and as well. Um, and the inter a, a, an interview in a very, very high profile program the interviewer said, well, I mean, what's equity doing? They're not, they're, they're not doing anything about this. And the person being interviewed said, well, no, no, this is the first of its kind. Now, that's actually just not true. It is simply not true, and it's very, it makes me incredibly angry. But the reason why people don't know it is because they haven't, we haven't told them clearly enough. You know, we've all got an awful lot of information in our heads, haven't we? And we're all trying to cope with so much these days. So we've got to get the message out loud and clear about what equity is doing. So that's a big thing for me. Also, 
I want to be I want to be the approachable face. I want people, and I think that works because I think people go, oh, you're a person. Oh, you're, all right, all right. oh okay, yeah, yeah. You're an actor. Oh, yeah, right, right. Well, you know what it's like when you're not working. I mean, I've, I've now finished it at um, the Royal Exchange, and I don't know where my next job is, is coming from. So, I'm, you know, you know, I can look the membership in the eye, as they say. Um, and, and I think that those, those are the things that I think are, I see as my main my main goals to be a sort of a champion yeah for the membership mm. it's interesting what you're talking about because um i i'd actually written here from your articles and your interviews i can see how passionate and involved you are just the language that you use yeah. um and it really does feel it's refreshing it's really refreshing to feel like someone is on your side and they've got your back yeah. Um, because oh, you good. do. Thank you. I'm really pleased to hear yeah. that. Really am. You do feel like you're on your own. Um, I mean, I, I would say uh, uh, that you know that that last article I wrote in the magazine, which I know not everyone, everyone will have read, and I would encourage our members as well. I mean, that's the other thing. That magazine, which is also available online, um, you know, is so important because it's got all kinds of information and you know we won two major TUC awards that's all the all the different unions that produce a magazine in the UK I mean there's, a, there's an awful lot of them and we've won two major uh, awards I won't be able to remember the exact title of it but it was about content and also about what the magazine looked like and how how um sort of readable it was you know um, and uh, and we've really worked hard on that and I know because I used to do it myself you know oh there's the magazine oh I'll leave it right there burning a hole in my table and then eventually oh it's too late I'll just chuck it well take the plastic cover off it and recycle it um, but you know it's got all kinds of information in about about you know what you, who you can speak to it's got things about charities that you can contact uh, the equities involved with you know which are to do with um, if you have an injury and you can't work BAPAM the great um, uh, charity Charity for, for um, people in equity and the musicians' union, which is a completely free. I mean, it's it's, it's an extraordinary thing. You can get you can you can see someone. This is an example. Someone who is an absolute top of their game. You know, a, a consultant in whatever field. It, um, all these things they're in that magazine. <laughs> so open it up and have a gander at it. Um, uh, you know, Christine Payne, our fabulous general secretary, um, she writes a column, I write a column, you can see what we're getting up to and everything like that. And if you want to write into one of us and go, or email me, or, or Christine, we both have equity.org.uk addresses. Um, mine is mbt at equity.org.uk. So hey, uh, email me and say, what a load of rubbish you were talking. And tell me why, and I'll get back to you and tell you, and we'll have a conversation. Or, or um, you'll go, wow, thank you very much, really pleased about that, or whatever it might be. But there's tons of info in there, and, and also often um, voting papers for really important issues that we're asking the membership to, to work on, to, to vote on, and have a say. So that's, that's um, something that I would, I would put a plea out for. Yeah. So... I read that your goal is to ensure that every single member of the union is given equal opportunities to work, regardless of their sex, ethnicity, or whether they have a disability. Which is brilliant. There are just so many topics in the limelight this year alone. I mean, we spoke about Time's Up and the Me Too movement, you know. Where do you start with all of this? Because there's it's well, a, you a long don't, list. You don't start. You literally just sit there uh, hoping that information, well, look, going out looking for information, you don't sit there like Jabba the Hutt. Um, uh, you, uh, and, you, uh, and people come to you as, as a, an officer of the union, which is um, the, all the volunteers. So I'm a volunteer, the two vice presidents of volunteer are amazing. Our honorary treasurer, uh, Bryn Evans, who, my goodness me, if ever I need somebody to look after my money, I'm going to ask Brent Evans. He's, he's amazing. He looks after equities, um, uh, equities money. Um, we are all volunteers. All the council are volunteers. All the committees are volunteers. The structure goes president, vice presidents, and honorary treasurer. Uh, we talk to the, the, the heads of staff, and they all have their departments on our side. You then have the council, which is a ruling um, body of the, of the union, which represents all the different um, disciplines within the union, hopefully. And that's where we're, what we're trying for. Um, then, uh, so the, we, the officers, will recommend something to council. Something comes in, and we say, 
we think we should do this. Council then debates it, says yes, that's a good idea. Often what can also happen is we have committees, we have industrial committees, there's the stage uh, industrial committee, there's the um, uh, film and new media committee, we have an audio committee, we have a stage management committee, um, those the, the committees, um, the, the industri industrial committees, then there's also, there are the, um, uh, talking to you about, talking to me about, you know, the, the, the minorities, we have the women's committee, still uh, amazingly in 2018, a minority, I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, well, as are all of these things. D, deaf and disabled committee, um, black and ethnic minority committee, and um, uh, the LGBT plus committee. So they are all feeding into all the different things, and it's like a kind of pyramid structure. So eventually, so as, a, as an officer, I'm allowed to go anywhere I want. All the officers can go in to any of the committees, any of the, uh, the, the, the forums that are happening. And um, in fact, one of the things that's happening, I think it's next week is, and I've done it and it's amazing, is an unconscious bias training, which every new council gets to have if they want. This amazing woman comes in, and I went in there, like so many people in our business, because we think, yeah, we have to incredibly understand, oh, come one, come all, if you're not hurting anybody, that'll be great. And you sat there, and I was like, oh, I don't really need this. And within like five minutes, I was going, oh, I made a really, I made a completely, a call which was to do with my view of something, you know, my own, my own bias about things. Um, so, we, so that, so I don't start anywhere. I, I suppose I start from somebody coming to me or coming to the officers and saying, look at this situation. I have learned, I cannot tell you how much I have learned in the time that I have been vice, well, on council then, vice president, because with each step, you're, you're privy to more information. Mm. Um, and I just, I, 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 I can't say enough what it must be like to be a wheelchair user in, and want to be anything in our industry, anything really, in my own discipline, acting, to constantly find yourself turning up for uh, you know, uh, interviews, meetings, auditions, and you can't even get into the building. So people, they come outside and they, they, you do your pieces in the street. You do the reading in the street. I mean, it's 2018, come on, catch a grip. And also, incredibly surprised by, I would have thought, you know, the LGBT plus community would be a shoe in because, you know, hey, our business is so open and blah, 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 blah. No, doesn't necessarily work like that. So um, it's really, yes, it's an absolute eye opener and there's so much to be done. And all you can do is do your best lend your name. I'm very surprised. Actually, I didn't realize how much weight it, it, it brings with it if the president of equity turns up to something. It really makes a difference to people. It makes a difference to the members who are there. They go, yeah, the president. I mean, I can't turn up at everything because I'm sometimes not there. I'm in another city working or whatever it might be, but whenever I can. But it also makes a difference to the people who they are engaging with and saying you need to make changes is the fact that the president's there. And so that that's without me doing anything. That's just because I happen to be called the president of equity. But but it, it carries with it a, a weight that I hope I can use, you know, for the for the for the good of the membership. What does your kind of day look like? Because you are you are it is a you're volunteering um, and you're still working. So is are you is there any kind of do you have to do a certain amount of hours, or um, how does it work? <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to share that with us, that is. Oh, 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 oh. oh, no, no, I can share it, but no, setting hours, nah, it's never going to happen. Um, it's a bit like every day is different, really. I mean, when I'm, I mean, I was in Manchester, as I said earlier, you know, uh, uh, working for 11 weeks, which is a very long uh, repertory theatre gig. Um, so I did what I could up there, from up there, but it meant that, I wasn't as available for, certainly when I was rehearsing, I wasn't as available for meetings that were happening in London, for instance, as I would have been, um, but still managed to get about um, up to Scotland for some meetings, and there were some things going on in Manchester which I was able to be part of. But, I mean, on a, it, it would be possible to drown in it if you let yourself. And I, so as I say about that very, very steep learning spiral, really, rather than curve, um, I... 
I am learning about how to manage that better and how to um, delegate um, and, and, and I'm getting to understand better that the staff are there to help and I, I mean I, I knew they were but it's how much I can ask of them because they are so busy with so many incredibly important things. This is absolutely true. So. Um, Yes, it's a whirlwind, um, and what I think my attitude is is that I, do, when I'm not working as I'm not at the moment, pack as much in as possible. I mean, the, you know, the weeks up to Christmas are just like because it's the end of the year as well, and we're kind of you know um, trying to batten some stuff down. Um, and then when I go away to work, which hopefully will happen again, I will um, you know then feel well, I've I've done what I can there, and so, so it's that really, you know, um, I'm trying to be careful not to burn yourself out because you can become less effective if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> There's an, another topic that keeps kind of popping up is this sort of working class struggle um, to get into acting. Um, you know, it's something that hasn't continued to affect me and I think it affects an enormous amount of people. Anyone who has to obviously have another job to, you know, work as an actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, th I think, you know, there's, there's obviously things that can be done in terms of drama school, in terms of, you know, making it more open and giving people opportunities to go to drama school. But I wonder how much it can be really changed because the nature of the industry is you're going to need a second job, aren't you? And, I, and it's... Well, um, yeah, I mean, I suppose... And that's going to detract from, you know, you having full focus on becoming an actor. And it's... Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, gosh. Um, my barmaid skills are almost as well honed as my acting skills, I have to say. Um, I, it's interesting you should ask this question on this very day, because yesterday I was part of a delegation, is that the right word? No, probably not. We launched in, uh, at that, in the Houses of Commons. Houses of Commons? So suddenly there's more than one house. In the House of Commons, um, a campaign to break the class ceiling, as opposed to the glass ceiling, led by the fabulous uh, MP, Labour MP, Tracy Braben, who is um, a, a card-carrying member of equity. She was an actress, and still is. You don't stop being an actress just because you're, obviously she's completely, <laughs> um, uh, her, her life is about being an MP now. But she is heading up this campaign to look at how do we get more people in the working class people, uh, how do we make it easier for them to come into our industry? Because if we don't, it's utterly morally wrong on, in every possible way, but also in terms of the guys out there, I keep saying guys, the people out there who are the industry engagers and employers living at that, it makes for a much less interesting industry. It makes for a much less interesting way of telling stories. Um, it makes for a same old, same old, um, and, um, and and so everything's richer for having a, a really, really diverse. So that was that's actually just literally happened yesterday. It was very exciting. Um, many people uh, spoke, um, a, a, a trumpeter from the, um, Musicians' unions spoke wonderfully about the importance of music. Um, uh, 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 the lady who is the vice chair of the Writers Guild, um, it's a very successful television writer, she spoke with passion. Um, uh, our own, um, uh, I think she's vice chair of the Women's Committee, is Jackie? Uh, she's a councillor, Jackie Clune, the fabulous Jackie Clune. She um, spoke on our behalf, and it was really, it was really, it was very, very heartening because the passion, and there was a lot of MPs in the room as well, um, the passion to get something done. However, the massive problem isn't, is, isn't it, that this is worldwide. The difference between the elite, the moneyed, and the non-elite, and the, the non-moneyed, is getting wider and wider and wider and wider. And we have people like Donald Trump in the White House, and we have people in our governing body in this country too, who are, it seems to me, talking to each other and preserving their standing in the world. 
hold on to your billions, hold on to your great lifestyle, hold on to your right to be healthy, hold on your right to your right to be warm, hold on to your right to feed your children. I mean, universal credit, hello? People, food banks can't cope. They cannot cope, they do not. You, people are in this country, 2018, who cannot feed their children. I mean, seriously, I, mean, I expect to wake up at any minute from this nightmare and go, oh, it was all a terrible dream. Because these people who are supposed to be, who people voted to look after us, apparently, um, don't seem to give a tuppenny toss. And for me, this, of course, as president of equity, it's fantastically important that the, that, that the people in our industry have, have a right, but it is part of a much, much bigger thing. And the money side of it is is massive. I mean, that, that's the thing we've got to change. Because if we don't change the fact that you need to have all that money to go to... Your, God, when I went to drama school, I, 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 went, I went to drama school in 1971. My parents were quite well off. I mean, I'm not suggesting they could throw fivers away, but they were, you know, they were well enough. I got my grant paid and they had to pay £31 a term towards my grant or something like that. And um, and they, and I had to, I, well, I didn't have to, but I went out to work and, you know, contributed and all that thing. Um, student debt. You know, you come out of a drama school at £50,000 of student debt in our business. Wait, how, how, how are you going to pay that back? Who are the people who are going to pay that back? I mean, it's, oh, so we, we've got to do something about it. We've got to start somewhere. We've got to challenge it everywhere we see it. You know, theatre, the prices of theatre tickets, that whole thing about theatres for everybody, is it really? Is it really? Yeah, you go to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Shakespeare, the, the, William Shakespeare, um, you know, arguably the greatest writer in any language that has ever lived on the planet, whatever, of all time. Um, he is our, he is our uh, national, is that the right word? I don't know. He's, he's our playwright. You go to Stratford, have you seen the ticket prices? Theatre for the people? It's, 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 it, that's an example, it's an example. Um, We've, re we've got to change all that. How does a working class kid go, oh, that's for me, when their parents are going to food banks for their food? It's a nonsense. Art is vital. It is vital. And one of the other reasons, of course, why the people in charge in all kinds of ways, not just in government, but the people in, who run industries, and of course our industry, is all, our industry is now beleaguered by the fact that the multinational conglomerates have gone, Oh, look, there's a beleaguered workforce, desperate to work because they love what they do. And you know what? You can pay them thumbs hate me for doing really long hours and working very hard. Let's get in there. And they're getting in there and they're taking things over. And the only thing that they're interested in is paying their dividends to their shareholders. So they're not interested in you and I. They're going to pay us as little as they humanly possibly can, unless it's a big star, in which case, of course, and I get it, and I don't want the big I think it's great that there are big stars and that there's always that aspiration, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be us and them. And it's got to be us as a, as a team, and we've all got to work together. So we, it's, it's, the times are parlous. They really are. It's terrifying. I'm, I think it's terrifying. Yeah, and the reality is that people go to drama school, they get themselves into debt, a lot of this is a large percentage, and you know, within a year or two out in the industry, they've had a couple of jobs, they're working in restaurants or bars, pretty unhappy, can't pay back the debt or live a lifestyle that is even nearly comfortable. And years down the line, they're faced with a situation of, do I continue like this or do I just stop this now and go and find a, a career and find money somewhere in something that I'm not passionate about? And I think there's, you know, my drama course, there was 20 of us, and I'd say within a, a year, maybe two years, there, there's, there was about, it was reduced to four or five people that were continuing, and it's the same now. Yeah. And that's how many people are going through the process and, and the time and the money doing it to not continuing for absolutely. all these reasons. And, no, uh, and it's, absolutely. you know, it's the nature of the industry and it, it, it's really important that people go into it with their eyes open, isn't it? And, and they... For sure, and we're doing a lot of work in equity now, much more work than ever did before, although there was always some um, of going into drama schools and, and, and saying to people early on, because that's as important a part of it as learning how to speak clearly and how to fence if that's what of interest or whatever, it, you know. Uh, it's really important that you you are equipped with how does it work? How does that, how does a tax return work? Yeah. 
for people in our industry. How does national insurance work? You know, are you going to look after yourself with a pension? What is it like out there? What's an audition situation like? All those things, trying to prepare people for that is, but the other thing that is a big problem is there are far too many courses for drama out there now. There are far too many courses with drama in them and people go into them and they think that it's all going to be great and they're kept in there and they're, I don't know, the, the, the money that the unit, I'm not saying it's, of course, that I'm not, I'm not trying to say that all of these um, training institutions are bad. I'm not saying that, but just that whole thing of like that brings in students into your thing. It's, you know, it, it, it perpetuates the myth. Mm. And out at the end of May, June every year, out tumble all these thousands of young, no, and some not so young hopefuls. And the chances, as you say, of you know, I mean, within my years, Victorney, there was only. Can you imagine Valhalla? This is back in 1971. So there were. 12 of us in the year, 200 people auditioned, 200. I mean, if it's not 2,000 now, it's, it's way above that. Um, yeah. nine of, nine, 12 of us got in, uh, end of the first year, one chap went, oh, I'm never going to get any money at this, I'm off. And he went off and became very, very successful <laughs> in his own, which has nothing to do with them. Uh, but, and within two or three years, half of us were not in the business anymore, That's without question. And now there are, I can't remember yet, three of us. That's the percentage, isn't it? Yeah. And people don't, they don't realise. And they're two, three years out in the industry before they go, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing that came up, which was interesting, and it, it just pops into my head, um, because um, one of the, the, the people who was in my class at drama school, um, she was a drama teacher in one of the big um, comprehensive schools in the north of London, running an incredibly successful department. Um, you know, kids really being brought out of them. All the things that... Even if you don't go into our business, our, our industry, you know, by becoming an actor, a director, a designer, whatever it might be that you're intrigued by, by going, by doing drama lessons, you are encouraged to to communicate with people. You're encouraged to work as a team. You're encouraged. Your confidence is boosted by it. All those things that drama classes can give you. There was a big cut in that particular area. The first thing to go was the drama department, and Jane was. You know, off you go, and of course now. So that and that's happening everywhere. And now, of course, as we know, the government, which says these are the important sus uh, subjects that you need to be doing with your pupils in in school, the the, the international, uh, the the European baccalaureate has no, as you will know, no art subjects in it at all. So, uh, so there's a we're, that's the other thing we're fighting is that we're saying no, no, no. This is incredibly important, and everyone at that that. Um, that launch of the breaking the class ceiling, everyone spoke about that and the importance of getting in there early, getting primary school children singing and talking and dancing and whatever it might be. Themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really important. There's a lot of work that's more and more work that's coming up in spotlight that is non equity. Yes. Um, I just wanted to see what your thoughts are on this and, you know, people who are looking at this and considering it, or maybe their agents are just putting them up for it and they're not realising, um, you know, it does mean you're not protected. They are lower rates because you have, you know, standards for the rates and yeah, yeah, in place yeah. Um, yeah. the terms. So, yeah, I wanted to see what your thoughts are. Well, about. we're worried about it. Um, it. Of course, it's a worry. Uh, we can't do anything about it. We, we're, we, we can't go, you can't do that. Uh, there's quite a lot of, and I, I won't be able to remember the exact expression that uh, some companies use, but where they, it's like uh, equity parity wages or equity compliant wages. And you go, yes, okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that um, you will get your guarantee a, a, this seems to be always what it means. You will get the um, the minimum rate that equity has set for that particular sector, but what it won't mean is that you will get your holiday pay, and that you will get your um, you you will get all the other things that the equity looks at. The, the the conditions part of it, the terms bit of it might be mm, okay up to a point. You will not get your subsistence if you're outside of London, that sort of thing. So that's worrying for equity. And I know that we're in discussions with Spotlight, um, which is obviously the preeminent casting forum in our business. Um, so what we can do is if somebody gets a job with one of these companies. Um, and I'm not suggesting, I mean, some of these companies, they're doing their best, you know, and we, you know, and if somebody wants to do a profit share, 
they can do a problem. You know, equity is not going to go, oh, j'accuse. Sorry, let me see my finger. <laughs> um, equity is not going to do that. Um, but equity is going to hope that if anything goes wrong, hope, number one, hope it doesn't. But if it does, that you will be on the blower to us. Because we cover our members, whether it's an equity contract or not, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and... Uh, Actually, if it's to the benefit, that. pardon. I didn't know that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're a member of equity, so you have the you have all that at your fingertips at any time. The other thing that a lot of people don't know, which might be worth mentioning, um, is that the the insurance that comes with equity, uh, being a member of equity, starts as you leave your home to go to work. The moment you step outside your house, you're insured all the way to your work that whole working day until you get back to your your home, that it covers you. Um, I, there's an example, a few years back, icy conditions, uh, actress on her way into uh, rehearsals to, for a takeover in a major musical in, in London, slipped on a, a doorway, um, going into thing, you know, it's a bakery or somewhere, picking up a hot roll, and um, uh, slipped, broke her ankle, couldn't do the job, lost obviously the job, couldn't do the job um, singing and dancing. Um, the equity got on it, um, she got pay, I can't, I, I can't remember then what the deal was, but you know, the pay was paid and then you get half pay for a certain amount of time, uh, bills are covered, all that sort of stuff. And she was, really? But I wasn't at work. I said, yes, but you are, because you're on your way to work. And then you can pay something like £5.72 extra, <laughs> which covers you for the whole year. Right. Which is amazing, which is because we hope nobody ever gets injured. Yeah. Chance to be a fine thing, but... So that's it. I just wanted to mention that because yeah, I, I think there's a, that's the thing you asked about earlier, you know, the thing about what members don't know about equity, what members don't. And, and that's so I absolutely get it. And we're working as hard as we can to get the mes message out there. But members need to do some work as well. And they need to come towards us and they need to they need to read the magazine and they need to go on the website and they need to talk to one another um, and, and, and find out you know, more about what we're... And get active uh, and involved. Uh, 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 and if yeah. you fancy it, get a bit active. Join a branch. I mean, the branches are fantastic. I mean, my own branch, personally, which I obviously talk about because I know about it, it's the West and South West London branch. You can join any branch you want, but only one because you get voting rights and things, which obviously... Um, we've... Our, our guest list of speakers, I mean, we've had to put it on Eventbrite because it's you know, so popular. Um, and great workshops. We have readings and we have had people out of the workshops that absolutely getting jobs because of those workshops. Support network is fantastic. You get a network of friends you can speak to who know a bit more about it. People who come from all kind of different disciplines so they, they can kind of advise you. There's a committee for each one and a chair who make fantastic decisions. And then and, and you guys, a branch member, you can then, if, if, if anyone listening to this conversation is interested in getting involved, that's a really great way to get started. You don't suddenly have to go, hello, I'd like to be president. I mean, you can do that if you want, but you know, but what you can do is you can join a branch and just go along and see what it's like. Um, and, uh, and, and then you get to go, here's a, here's a motion I want to put, I think it's incredibly important that this happens in, in, in future in equity and um, that you make that into a motion, it's passed by your committee. The committee takes it to, please come in, um, the committee takes it to um, you, to the council, um, uh, to OSMT. We look at it, we go on and that, we give it to council, and the council votes on it. And then it becomes goes to the annual representative conference, and if it gets a two-thirds majority, the council have to act on it. So you, as a branch member, can absolutely directly influence what equity is about. Mm. I mean, it's, it's Brilliant. fantastic. Yeah. So, Rather than sitting thinking, because we're busy, people are busy trying to get work, honing their skills all the time when they're not working, when they are working, and also, as you say, doing other jobs to just make ends meet, whatever. Um, so there's not, uh, get it, there's not a lot of time, but that's something you can do. And it's fun. It's really good fun. There's usually a nice drink after and a bit of a chat, a bit of a gossip. Yeah. But don't sit there going, oh, I wish this was different. You've got a chance to do something about it. Something that's just struck me, actually, as we've been talking. Um, are you at all involved with agents? Because agents put their own, they decide what commission they apply. Um, there's, there doesn't seem to be any kind of rules or anything in place in terms of um, the relationship between the actor and agent. And as I say, you know, one agent can be saying, I'm going to charge you 25% commission on your television jobs, where another one can say, I'm going to charge you 10% commission. There's no kind of hard, fast rules, are there? 
I just wanted uh, no, to apparent, uh, no, there, are, there aren't. Um, and that's a tricky one for us because it's kind of out with our remit, yeah. really, um, because of where agents sit in the whole kind of employment and great engager structure. <coughs> um, apart from the money, that I mean, there's a huge difference between. I mean, I've I've heard stories of seventeen and a half percent, seventeen and a half percent on a rep contract wage. Yeah. How can how can people justify that? I mean, it's absolutely shocking. So of course we're out there going. Could you stop that, please? And you know, talking to people, but it's a very, very difficult thing. And but it's very, very important that we do engage with with, with the um, agents, and we do we are speaking with the the personal managers association and the the group that looks after the um, um, that kind of agency. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Cooperative. Cooperative, thank you, yeah. So there's a PMA and the CPMA, and you began with a C, but I couldn't remember the, yeah, so we're talking to them always, we try to include them all the time, but I've always been very, this is where the older members of our industry can come in as well. I shared a dressing room with an actress of my own age and a young girl in her 20s, um, not all that terribly long ago, and she was terrified of an agent. Terrified of an agent. And of course, myself and my pal, very long in the tooth, and I'm very lucky. I have the best agent in the known universe. Um, uh, so I'm completely thrilled, and uh, it took me a long time to get them, but I'm cleaving them to my bosom now that I've got them. Um, but, uh, and and, and the, the other woman in, in the, uh, the older woman, uh, she also is a very, very good agency. And the young woman, she was with a very good agency as well, but she was in that thing of like, oh, well, you know, they might chuck me if I don't, blah, blah, blah. And it was all around this thing, which was this very, um, a good job. It would have been in a very high profile. It would have got a lot of attention. I think it was a television series or like, you know, a, a three episode drama, whatever, you know, a really lovely thing for a major television channel. Um, but it included having to take your clothes off. And she just was like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And um, we were like, that, well, don't. No. You just say, no. And um, she's like, oh, but, 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 but. you know, and the, what will they say? And they'll be really angry with me. Sorry? But I understand where that comes from. And that's the other thing we're trying to say to all of our, certainly our acting members, our performing members, people, who, our members who have agencies. And it's really hard to hold on to this because of the way that the power structure has developed over the decades, which is you employ your agent. If it wasn't for you, your agent would not be earning a living. So you have to remember that. And we need that's, I think, something that we need to change around. Not with every agent. There are some fabulous agents out there. Um, but there are some agents who have got that skewed. They've got it a bit skewed. Um, you need to listen to your clients. So that, that is something we're, we're aware of, really. Because this kind of power struggle comes with yeah. the agents as well, doesn't it? So Yeah. Mm. It's really hard to change things which are deeply embedded in that way because people don't let go of power unless they're really, really made to. And it's completely understandable. You know, it's kind of, whoa, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's, it's all, it all seems to have been working fine because, and then it's our job to go, well, do you see, this is the reason why it's not and hold it up to them and you know, hopefully try and change things. It's a long, it's a long road. It's a long, hard job. And that's why I keep saying, keep on keeping on. That's what we've got to do. So lastly, what does 2019 hold for you in equity? Now you've said about your celebration of one year. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's obviously very, that's huge. It's going to be massive. That, that's hugely uh, important. And I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled by how well the, um, the yeah, the agenda for change and this, the Safe Spaces campaign has gone. So it's going to be a real chance to get some people in that, um, get some people in that room and say, look, look how well this is. And the affirmation I read out at the beginning, we're, we're, we're putting a video together a bit like the, um, uh, you know, the, that wonderful BBC ident they did um, when they did Perfect Day and every, all these different people sang it so we're going to have different people in the industry all speaking it nice. and we're going to um, uh, edit it together so that and roll that out for people to use if they if they want to sort of pass it on to people. Um, we've got that happening. Um, to be honest with you, 
it's really more of the same. Um, at the beginning of next year, we will have our um, <clears throat> we will have our national meetings, when we will talk to all the different um, national committees individually, and we will get the um, the the. Uh, the motions that will come in, as I say, and we will lead up to May, which is our uh, annual representative conference where big time um, uh, decisions are made um, which is going to happen in our industry. Um, and I have to say another thing that I would encourage the mem any members listening to this to do is um, if you haven't got to the point where you want, you're, you're actually active in like a branch where you can actually come as a delegate to the, to the ARC, it all sounds very kind of... Um, bit dry and a bit good wordy and oh gosh really uh, do I want to do that it's thrilling it's I can't tell you my first ARC I, it's so thrilling I, um, seeing collective activism at its best people talking with passion about something for something and somebody else getting up going absolute rubbish no 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 this is a disaster it's just amazing and you know I haven't done it yet next year will be my first president and chairing that and Malcolm Sinclair who was my predecessor who was a fabulous president and was brilliant at that sort of thing so I've been I've been watching him over the past couple of years going uh -huh. so that's how you do it but um but several people um, you can come as a, as an observer you don't you don't have voting rights but you can come and you can sit there and you can um, and you can watch what happens, and you can and you can talk to people about how it all works, and and and, and understand how passionate people are about your welfare. And you, you you might never have had anything to do with anything, but you you are cared about as much as the person who is knocking their pan in like myself, um, because every single person counts. It's, as I said there, every single person uh, coming in with the with the kind of baggage that they have to trail behind them and the walls that they face everywhere they go and opening those walls up and breaking those walls down and uh, you know we can only do it if we all and it's more important now than ever it is thank you my pleasure appreciate your time thank you very much pleasure thank you <laughs>